for our theme music. Every good hero. I have some. All right, everyone, this is Tim of the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. It's the day after the debacle. You know, that, that, that should be a sound effect, the day after the debacle, because evidently we have a lot of debacles. We've had six debacles. But don't worry. The problem has been solved. The issue for everything is Joe Judge's headsets. They never work anywhere he goes. That's why they have such poor timeout management. Problem solved. Alert the NFL. Let's play these other six games over again. Joe Judge has a headset issue in every single stadium that he goes to. You want to talk about someone making a dumbass excuse? You think, you know what? And this is why I keep saying Joe Judge is so calculating. When he has time to think of comments, he comes up with the head, the, the fish stinks from the head down. When he talks off the cuff, and speaks the truth, it's always everyone's fault but his. This whole garbage pile is his fault. You can't preach discipline and be one of the most undisciplined teams in the league. You cannot preach situational awareness and not understand certain things, not understand timeout management. But again, the headsets were going out. We're having headset issues. This happens every game so far. Really, you happen at Giant Stadium too? We deal with the league and they keep telling us there's different software updates or whatever it is. But we had to have to call two timeouts today because they were trying to send us the de- uh, deals and personnel wise. And we got half the headsets not getting reception. Really? Wow, this is the first time I've ever heard any of this. This is breaking news by Joe Judge. Your horrible clock management, that has nothing to do with it. Your lack of your player discipline had nothing to do with it. Being conservative all of a sudden on fourth down had nothing to do with it. It's the freaking headsets. Hallmark of a loser making excuses. Man up. And I don't want to hear, well, and I don't want to hear these giant fans, well, we, we tried our best. We did our best. You know, I always think of Sean Connery. Your best. Losers always whine about their best. Winners go home, queen. There you go, Sean Connery from The Rock. That bout sums up the Giants and some of these Giant fans, our best. And you want to sit there and talk about, oh, the headsets aren't working. This is why there was everything so wrong. Oh, right, you don't have hand signals? You don't have that? You don't have hand signals. Oh, wait, Joe Judge did that. Well, we do have hand signals or whatever. We do have. You can't rely on equipment. You got to figure something else out. Okay, okay, Joe, but you're going to blame the headsets. You're a freaking idiot. Can we just fire you now? I hated you the day they hired you. I hated you all last season, and I still hate you this season. Because I thought you were a pompous ass, and the best thing anyone can say about you is, well, you won. The, he won the press conference. Yeah, and I said it before. I don't care about you winning the press conference. I want you to win games. Don't sit there and preach discipline to me and have one of the most undisciplined giant teams that I have seen in the last 40 years. But that's okay. That's all right. Was there good things in the giant game? Well, people are probably going to point to, uh, what's his name? You know what? I, I, I'm going to point to Quincy. He had three tackles, one for a lost quarterback hit. And according to Pro Football Focus, he was he was uh, f- t- team leading full of pressures. Uh, that that in a bag of donuts will get you a Leonard Williams contract. Giant secondary play lights out. Well executed, well designed play. They and and, and I'm not even going to give them 100 percent credit for Patrick Graham. All they did is they followed the formula of the rest of the league on how to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes always wants to go deep. He's always looking deep. He's always looking to make the big play. He even said it, and we said it before about how to beat the Giants. You dink and dunk. You take what's in front of you. You're going to play two deep, uh, two safeties deep, and that's what you do. So the, the secondary played what they were supposed to do. I, t- I mentioned before, Darnie Holmes and Julian Love were going to have big game, not big games, but I knew they were going to have need to be a large part of the game plan. Uh, don't get too excited about Dory Jackson's tw- 12 tackles uh, and a pass defense. That's because he was targeted quite extensively because he plays so far off the ball. Yeah, it's great after they make the catch that you make the tackle. That's great. That's what your job is there for. But your job is also to stop them from making the catch. 
Logan Ryan, you thought he was gonna he thought he was gonna be the hero of the game when he stripped uh when he stripped the uh, what's his name, Travis of the ball. You know, that was late in the third quarter. So you know, that that kept the Giants within four points. James Bradbury, he had an okay night. He did scoop up the fumble by Ryan. He did a pass. You know, he had one pass events and he, and he did uh, he did a good job disrupting disrupting the Chiefs in, in secondary. I kind of knew Darney Holmes, like I said, was going to play a lot today. He had, if you want to look at it, he had a brilliant fourth quarter. He had a fantastic fourth quarter. And the interception, of course, all for naught because of the venerable Oshane Zimenez jumping off sides. Just talks about, we're just talking about discipline here. We're just talking about discipline here. Most undisciplined team I've seen in 40 years. And can we get into Daniel Jones? It's time. It's time. He's not the guy. He's not the man. You got 67 seconds left with the ball. Yeah, you had no timeouts, but you still got to try to do something. You got to do something. You got to make a play. You got to do something. And, and let's face facts. He really didn't have any great, consistent drives this entire game. Touch, your touchdowns are coming off turnovers. And that bad interception to Willie Gay, son of Willie Gay Jr., former defensive uh, defensive back from the Detroit Lions and Nick Bolton. You know, it's funny. I did a, I did a, a William Gay video and Nick Bolton video before the draft saying, I think the Giants should draft either both of these guys or one of these guys go back and watch it. Did a great I did a good breakdown of that. And they're, they're paying dividends for the chiefs, but Daniel Jones is showing me nothing. I'm not doing the Dave Brown comparison. I'm doing the Daniel Jones isn't, average NFL quarterback who will have moments. And if that's what you want for your franchise quarterback, then so be it. Average quarterback who has his moments. And that people are going to say, well, Eli, some people are going to defend him. Eli Manning was an average quarterback, had moments too. Eli Manning was above average quarterback who had moments, but he had moments in the Super Bowls. He had moments in playoff games. He had moments in the two-minute drill when that Eli Manning, especially in the first 10 years of his career, got the football with under two minutes left. You knew he was going to drive his team down for a score. Daniel Jones gets the ball, he, and I've said it a million times, he looks like a kid lost in an amusement park. He doesn't know what to do. And, of course, now you're going to blame the offensive line, and he doesn't have the weapons in this. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, stop. He's got talent, sure. But as Roy Hobbs' father said in The Natural, Roy, talent is not enough. And that's what it is. There's, always, there's this intrinsical thing that quarterbacks have. There are quarterbacks that can be hard. Like Eli. Eli could be 11 for 24 the entire game and look like he's a bum. And you put him in the fourth quarter, he's 12 for 12 for 200 yards and two touchdowns. Daniel Jones, you give him the ball, with any time left and needing a scoring drive. Of course, people will point to New Orleans game, and I'll also point to all the other games, the two and a half seasons before that. He's not growing. He's not maturating. He's not the guy. You can have all the talent in the world, but I don't think he even has all the talent in the world. I think he has the skills. I think he has a certain skill set. And in some ways, I, I, I want to blame Gettleman. But his defense is not horrid. His line, his line play is, is his offensive line play kind of is. But then you also have to blame him because he took Saquon Barkley and he took Daniel Jones. So you, you, I guess you kind of have to blame him for that as well. So we've said it once. We've said it before. We've said it a million times. This town needs an enema. You got to blow it up from within. You got to build, you got, you got to tear this down. And I hate to say it, but in some ways you got to tear this down to the foundation because you know what you, you, you built, you built the foundation on, you know, on sandy soil and you didn't reinforce it. Or if this was a horror movie, I would say, well, maybe we built our foundation on an Indian burial ground and that's why we're cursed. Homage to poltergeist for Halloween. It's, it's got to be, it's, you got to just rip it down. 
Rip it down. Rip it like a, take it like a band-aid. Rip it off. Start over again. This is a team who has talent in certain areas. This is a team that has lacks of talent in other areas. This is a team that is going to be in salary cap purgatory next year. This is a team that has two potential high first-round draft choices, maybe in the front top 10. It's time to look at this. It's time to just say this is done. It's time to trade Evan Ingram, Daniel Jones, James Bradbury. It's time to... All the board, the Malik Willis Express. Except the problem is the draft Knicks have him going as high as three overall, third overall. It's time to do something different. It's time to, for the Giants to get out of the cement they're stuck in. It's time to show the league that we could jump into the 20th century and become a 20th century organization. It's time. I love how people say that Leonard Williams had an impactful performance. He had a sack and six tackles. Forced to film on a quarterback hit. Yeah, he had a good game. Did it, did, it, did it change the complexion of the game? No. What did he do when it was game time? What, it was, what did he do when it was time to stop them from driving for the field goals? What did he do? Where, where's the big play? Lawrence Taylor. And I'm, I'm probably the only giant that watched him, Giants draft Lawrence Taylor and watch him play his entire career. If a team were, if the Giants were winning by two and a team was driving for a field goal in the fourth quarter, Lawrence Taylor found a way to wreck Everything. He was an impact defensive player. Leonard Williams is not. Leonard Williams, I've said it before, plays for Leonard Williams. Because he doesn't like to get booed. Chip his ass out, though. We can't, though, because the contract will kill us because we pushed all of his money into the next year. Let's get rid of these bums. Let's just get it over with. Rip the Band-Aid off. Trade everyone by 430 today. And let's just end it. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you subscribe, ring that bell, you can that'd be awesome.